Hi everyone, and welcome to our ABB Energy Industries Tech Talk series. Today we will be presenting a new generation of tools for the digital pipeline, presented by Nigel Gretarix and Ian Holden. So before we begin, just a little housekeeping so that you know how to participate in today's event. You have the opportunity to submit text questions into, to today's presenters by typing your questions into the Q&A box of your attendee interface. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation, which will last approximately 25 minutes. We will collect these and address them at the end of the call during our Q&A session. A reminder that all attendees are on mute mode today and today's presentation is being recorded and will be provided to you um, in the next couple of days once the recording is finalized. And just a really quick disclaimer for today's presentation. Great. So as I had mentioned at the start, our webinar will be led by Nigel Gretarix, Global Segment Manager for Pipelines, Terminals and Storage, as well as with Ian Holden, Global Technology Manager for the Midstream Segment. And I will be your host today. The agenda for today's call is as follows. So we'll have a quick safety moment before we get into the, the main content of the webinar itself. We'll talk about what is a digital pipeline, We'll expand on different digital applications. We'll talk about how we're innovating alongside our customers. And we'll also discuss the benefits of complete integration, followed by a Q&A session. And just a quick safety moment before we get started. Um, even though some of you are listening from your home office and are familiar with the surroundings, please always um, listen and follow your local safety rules. This applies especially when attending the Tech Talk while in a car or other form of transportation. And we just ask that if you are in an office or an area where there are other people to keep a safe distance. And with that, I will hand it over to Nigel. Thank you, Lee. And, uh, and also um, a big thanks to all those people who have uh, joined this uh, session today. Um, we all see lots of invites in our inboxes throughout the week and throughout the month, and uh, we've all got busy agendas. So I hope that uh, the attendance is with interest on the, uh, the subject matter in, in, in terms of digital pipeline, because um, certainly two areas that um, I'm certainly heavily involved in today, and, and that's the digitalization of assets within the industries we work within, and uh, also the energy transition. and. Um, my general opinion, and uh, I share that opinion with lots of senior management, both in the supply chain towards these uh, assets and also in the operation of these assets, that we're not moving at the pace that we need to. And um, we're going to talk about that a bit uh, during this session today. Um, but I would just like to touch on some statistics that came out of a survey that was conducted in the US, specifically around this very topic. Um, the survey was conducted by a company called Kimberlite Research Group. And um, they, are up, they interviewed 30 operators in the, the USA. Um, and the specific topic was how they viewed the role of digital technology, both within their existing assets and how they look to plan to incorporate it into future assets. Uh, to put that in perspective, the USA currently operates around 2.6 million miles of pipelines. And just over 60% of those 2.6 million miles of pipelines are operated by 10 operators. So it was a pretty broad survey and, and reached far into the marketplace. But what we all know, uh, you know, is there is a lot of data always collected today. Uh, the main purpose, by the way, that people collect data for pipeline operations today, believe it or not, is for regulatory reporting, whether that be inspection, just to name one. Um, but it's not deployed as well as it could be for asset management and you know, to increase the performance and the, um, the cost uh, of your operations. And the general opinion as the outcome of that was that there needs to be a transformational approach, specifically in the um, execution of new projects in the capital phase of the project. Um, we don't see enough of the OPEX requirements coming into specifications. We don't see enough of OPEX requirements coming into the design requirements. Certainly when you get EPCs involved, that's not to criticize EPCs, but they very much only look at the capital side of the project and end users have a role to play here to embed some of their requirements from an operational perspective into those project requirements so that when those specifications start to come out into the marketplace, we can then work as with uh, other suppliers in, in this sector can, can work with those engineering contractors to ensure that some of the newer technologies today that can benefit your operations 
uh, are going to be considered during the, um, the, 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 the execution of the main projects. Um, and then, of course, it's the acceleration of digitalization. Um, we see a lot of repositories of data that are silo based today. Uh, and we also see that the data doesn't get to the right people. A lot of people sometimes think that digitalization means you can reduce your headcount. Not really. To a large extent, it means you've got to increase your headcount because data has been around, around and it's getting easier to collect data, especially with modern pipelines when you've got a high availability fiber optic transmission backbone that allows you to you know, collect data from all different sources. But it's what you do with that data. Uh, and part of this survey that Kimberlight Research conducted was how active existing operators were in North America with regard to their approach to asset management. And they looked at three categories, proactive approach, planned approach, and a reactive approach. Uh, and they also looked at the cost per mile of pipeline, the financial impact of their approach towards asset management. And there's huge differences that came out in the survey. Uh, just to quote some numbers, um, you know, with a proactive approach, uh, the data they analyzed was that it cost roughly one and a half thousand dollars per mile of pipeline uh, in their operational costs. But then if you look at it as a planned approach, um, it's 53% above that, almost $2.2 thousand dollars per kilometer. With a reactive approach, just under five thousand dollars per kilometer, which is 100% above the planned approach. And of course, we all know that um, you know, people say, well, if you've got the data, why don't you improve your plans? Well, a plan could be a routine shutdown. It's not necessarily being proactive, but clearly with a reactive approach, your availability and uptime reduces. Um, you're not proactive in terms of looking at the, not only the cost of running your assets, but the efficiency of your assets. And this all fits for us in the world of digitalization today. The data is there, it's what you do with the data. The same companies who were interviewed actually were asked whether they have a roadmap to address this, given that they said there was a need to accelerate their plans in digitalization. And only 50% said that they have plans that they hope to address this within the next two years. 45% uh, were up to five years that they wouldn't implement anything, and 5% didn't have any plans at all to do anything in the next five years. So, so clearly there's, there's, there's a need to accelerate. Um, there's lots of work that the supply chain can do for your existing assets, but as I said, the, one of the key issues that we see from ABB's perspective, um, specifically when we're involved in capital projects, is to consider these, uh, the, these in, in, in the execution of projects. And of course, that as, as more data becomes available and we start pulling more data from the assets, uh, the need for a systematic approach towards cybersecurity becomes absolutely key. Um, I think everybody who's involved in this sector knew what happened in the, new, in the US uh, with the Colonial Pipeline. Uh, and the knock-on effect to the US economy, not even thinking about the cost to the operations of uh, the operator there. So cyber security also has a, has a key role to play. Um, so just a bit of an opening speech there from me, and with that, I'd like to hand it over to my colleague Ian Holden, and uh, he will take you through some, some of the more technical, specific details around what I've just uh, introduced. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nigel. Uh, hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Um, yes. Digital pipeline. Digital pipeline is all about data, as Nigel has alluded to. But data is just a word for information. And I think there's some great quotes around. If you look on the web, you can have data without information, but you cannot have information without data. So when we talk about digital pipeline, we're really talking about what we can do with that data. Uh, the father of computing, Charles Babbage, who's largely uh, accredited with creating modern computing, um, errors using inadequate data are much less than those using no data at all. I think you always have to keep that in mind with the digital pipeline. It is not the cure-all, it is not the fix-all, it is basically another huge step forward in pipeline operations. Um, we'll talk a little bit about actually how a digital architecture looks in a moment, but I think it's important to put it into perspective. What is a digital pipeline? If you talk to ABB, you get a definition. If you talk to Emerson, Honeywell, other people, you'll always get a different definition of what a digital pipeline is. Is it smarter, faster decision making from a business perspective? Yes. Is it asset management? Is it looking after big components and little components like compressors, pumps, valves, etc.? Yes, it is. Is it understanding power consumption in the modern age of CO2 reduction? Well, many of the pipelines we look at and work on have multiple power sources. Is there a time you should be using grid supply? Should you be using your own solar supply? Should you be using your own fuel stock from the pipeline? That's a digital application, how you make that decision, what power supply to select. 
Is it to do with pipeline integrity management? Yes, it is pipeline integrity management. It's always been there. We're always improving how we do it. And there are some very innovative digital solutions coming on the market now, which we're looking at and working with these companies. And we'll share some of that information with you later. Is it having full visibility of assets along the pipeline? That's quite an easy term to make. Most pipelines these days have fiber optic communications along them. And we'll talk a little bit about what we've done in the past and what um, we hope EPCs and operators will consider more of going in, in the future, i.e. a pipeline no longer needs to be a separate SCADA and a group of ICSSs and RTUs. It can be a single distributed control system. Fiber makes that possible. And new emerging technologies also make it possible in certain regions, such as 5G. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later as well, if, if anybody would like to ask questions in that area. Um, transfer of control of pipelines, how do you do that? Well, typically that's a heavy coding thing for people when they're actually doing programming of the RTUs and the PLCs. Again, with a single approach of one DCS, that becomes much easier. So the answer to what is a digital pipeline, it's really what you want it to be. I think the secret of adopting to the digital world is selecting what you need from the digital world. You've got a big shopping list. You've got a huge potential to develop applications you need with it but you know, use it wisely. Data has always been there. When I joined ABB 25 years ago, we were already collecting lots and lots of data from the field, of which I would estimate about 10% was used effectively. And as Nigel has said, that data can be used more effectively now with the tools we have to um, contextualize it and analyze it. So where does this data come from when we talk about the automation and the operations environment? It comes from these three circles. If you look at the slide on the right here, it comes from the operational environment where there's data from the SCADA, from the field, et cetera. It comes from the engineering environment. Don't underestimate how, much, how many documents are delivered with a pipeline. From the automation vendor, from the electrical vendor, from the pipeline vendor, from the site manufacturing, et cetera. There's a huge amount of information available in the engineering environment. Data sheets for equipment, et cetera, all included there. And then there's the ever existing enterprise layer or the IT level. So we look at SAP systems, et cetera, in there. These are all huge data repositories. So when we talk about the digital advancement, we're talking about using data from these sources uh, meaningfully and to improve operations. So let's just summarize quickly why. And this, this is probably a very generic term, but clearly safety on pipelines is always a key driver. Pipelines have their own unique challenges compared to other industry segments we work in. Um, offshore is a dangerous area, but pipelines require much more travel and many of the pipelines we've worked on actually cross very hostile terrain with um, very bad weather conditions. It can actually be a dangerous political area, et cetera. So one of the reasons for adopting a digital approach to pipeline management and pipeline operations is to minimize the amount of times that maintenance personnel have to travel to sites. And we'll talk a little bit about how we do that as we go forward here. Environmental considerations, these are nothing new. Leak detection is very important from an environmental point of view, from a safety point of view, um, from an economics point of view, leak can be a deliberate leak, a hot tap, et cetera. So we can look at how digital technology can be adapted in that area. Economics, we can touch on, but clearly the smarter you work, the more autonomy you bring to a system, the less, the less room for error with a digital approach, you can improve the economy and the scale of your pipeline operation. And we'll also touch briefly on security for pipelines. Pipelines are a target for theft, especially liquid pipelines. Pipelines are critical infrastructure. And as Nigel has already mentioned, these examples are around us all the time. The biggest, most relevant example recently being the Colonial Pipeline. So when we think about digital pipeline, the cybersecurity onus we always have on the control and automation systems is equally applicable to the digital systems as they are business, business critical. I mean, Colonial Pipeline, as Nigel said, was shut down for a week. 6th of May, it happened and it didn't start up again until the 12th of May. That's an awful lot of production lost. And in that case, it was aviation, fuel, and gasoline. So where are we now? We're starting to get into the digital environments now, aren't we? Gathering data is no longer a challenge for pipelines. Why do we say that? We don't see any pipeline now in construction or being proposed which doesn't have a fiber optic backbone. And if it doesn't have a fiber optic backbone, it has got access to secure, reliable communications. Um, big terms which come up when we start talking about the digital world, um, you'll hear the term edge used. That's not an ABB term, it's a generic term. An edge in its simplest form is a gateway, a protocol converter, 
when we talk about protocols in automation, we're talking about OPC UA, we're talking about Modbus, we're talking about Profibus, we're talking about wireless heart, et cetera. All of that information exists and it's existed for many years. And quite traditionally that would go off to an asset management system, but we can do more than that now. Quite often it would be passed through the SCADA system to somewhere else with multiplexers, et cetera. What the edge does now, it's a dedicated piece of hardware for taking that information, which isn't primarily required for the SCADA or the ICSS, but it is required for business and operations optimization to an environment where it can be used, i.e. it removes all risk, all loading from the SCADA system, and it takes care of that self. Now, if you look at this drawing here, the edge doesn't have to be a simple gateway. You can actually put analytics, digital applications in the edge, dependent on the scale of operation or the scale of site you're working on or looking at. But that edge can actually perform its own critical tasks. Um, as I say, asset monitoring can be done in there. Key performance indicators can be generated from there and made available elsewhere. And again, because the edge does connect to the control network, cybersecurity is vitally important in that area. If you look above the edge in this drawing here, we're looking at a cloud. And in ABB world, that's GenX, but these clouds exist everywhere. And that's where the heavy duty, the high powered analytics uh, take place. And for a pipeline, a cloud is a logical, um, a logical addition to the pipeline because they gather data from multiple pump stations, tens of block valves, hundreds of block valves in some cases, pump stations, compressor stations, et cetera, uh, pressure reduction skids. So a cloud is a very powerful, um, a very powerful environment to analyze that data, to gather it and analyze it. So let's take a quick look at what goes on in the cloud. Now, this is where we're really talking about digital applications. As we said before, data is acquired from multiple areas, the operational zone, the engineering zone, and the IT area. Operational, typically through edges. Engineering can be through an edge, but it can also equally be through a DMZ or whatever and taken into this cloud. The cloud that you're looking at is the, the, the red box in the middle of this slide. So this is nothing new either. We've been doing information management systems, et cetera, for years. If you look at the top box, this is really the first step. If I've got data coming from multiple sources, what does it mean? Data is nothing unless you give it some meaning. So you have to contextualize that data. This is what we do in the cloud and, and digital environment. And I know we're still talking woolly terms, but we will come to some examples of how we use this technology in a moment. Then when that data is contextualized, we need some way of making a model because we need to understand what the data is showing us and we need to understand different scenarios around that data, what can change, what has changed, et cetera. So we start to use a cognitive model. Uh, many of you have been looking at digital applications, may already have heard the term digital twin. This could be a cog cognitive digital twin effectively. Those models exist for much of ABB equipment and other company equipment. And where they don't exist, they, they can be created in this environment. So that's very important knowledge. This needs to be flexible and it will be flexible going forward. The box in the middle says ABB domain knowledge, but that doesn't have to be ABB. That can be the compressor supplier, the pump supplier. You always need that domain knowledge to make these tools work correctly. I mean, typically we have an apprenticeship, so you can give someone a hammer, but unless they know how to use it, the nail isn't gonna get put straight into the wood. You need subject matter experts to, to configure this and to use this. So as Nigel said, people talk about autonomous operations and it means removing people. It means making decisions automatically using data available. People will always be required to review that data, to, uh, to modify the lessons learned through AI and ML. And AI and ML is the next level. And that is really the intelligence where we take the decision making away from the operator or at least assist the operator in making decisions when it comes to operations. ML in itself is a subset of AI, just so people are aware of that. So artificial intelligence is making the computer think as a person does. Machine learning is more to do with pattern recognition and gathering data and actually increasing a knowledge database. So be aware that that's very clever technology, but it needs to be applied to something and we apply it in a digital arena here. And then finally, what's the point in all of this information? Well, we have to analyze it and we have to put it somewhere. So if you look at the analytics package, it takes all of the information from the above points we've just discussed and it puts it out to those who need it. And that's typically in areas of operational performance management, which we can talk about, asset integrity and performance, and sustainability, i.e. we've got to operate greener. I think the whole world realizes that now. So that there is a digital model, i.e. that's where the applications are generated or created, and that's where the data comes from, i.e. The, the, the good information that comes from data. So 
just looking at some very um, so, some applications, and some of the applications are here now that I'm going to talk about, and some aren't here now. Asset performance management. Asset performance management, again, like digital, is an umbrella term. An asset isn't just a pump, a valve, a compressor, a flow transmitter, a pressure transmitter. It can be a group of devices. It can be one device. It can be the whole electrical system. It can be every instrument in the field. It can be a pressure reduction skid. The asset is whatever you want it to be. Assets are tiered or grouped, if you like. So asset performance management is all about understanding how the, those devices or those groups of devices are working. So you've seen the tool in the last slide and how we do that. So what we do is we bring a package called Asset Performance Managed together, which allows us to do what is known as predictive analysis and prescriptive analysis. Now, Nigel quoted some figures at the start. The quote on the right-hand side of this slide is from the US government, it's from the US Department of Energy, and it's basically telling us that you can save up to 40% over reactive maintenance when you start using a more intelligent approach to maintenance, and over 12% over preventative maintenance. Now, there are two terms here that hopefully you've seen before, predictive analysis, analysis and prescriptive analysis. The prescriptive analysis is really important, especially for pipeline operators, because predictive tells you when a device is going to fail or when its operation is going to degrade. The prescriptive analysis actually tells you why it's happening, what's the root cause. You need to know that when you want to take action to correct or to address the problem in the field, in the pump station, compressor station, block valve site, etc. So prescriptive analysis is particularly important to pipeline operators. And as you recall earlier, we said it's about safety. If I know exactly what tools I have to take to that site, what knowledge I need, that there makes that one journey, not two journeys, to go back to, to find the actual tools I need, etc. So asset performance management, a great example of a digital application. Leak detection, a very relevant system in pipelines. Um, we'll not spend too long on this. However, you know the age-old approach is LDS using mass uh, volume balancing, mass balancing approaches. And these these are actually digital digital solutions in their own right. They use models of the pipeline. They model it hydraulically. They have different approaches to how they do this, and they have different algorithms, etc., to actually define where a leak is. Very clever system. So that in itself is already a digital system in my mind because it uses models. It has a digital twin within the package itself. What we've seen more in recent times is um, LDS and intruder detection using fiber optic systems. So as I've said before, communications are not a challenge any longer in pipelines. Fiber is normally laid along beside the pipeline. Well, spare cores in that fiber can be used as a sensor for the length of the pipeline. And again, that system is ripe for a digital application because whilst it's an incredibly sensitive system and it picks up leaks very quickly, it also picks up every other piece of noise along the pipeline. It uses distributed vibration or acoustic sensing or temperature sensing, but especially the acoustic and vibration uh, sensing, that needs a lot of filtering because you only want the meaningful events to be highlighted to the operator so they can action them. You're not interested if a car is walking across the pipeline. You're not interested if a car is driving along the road nearby. So that's already doing an immense amount of work, which is ripe for the digital world and for the analytics environment we've talked about, i.e. machine learning, filter out the nonsense without having to use manual activity to do that. And then to put it all together at the top here, there's a drone, we'll talk about that as well. It's another option for um, external leak detection. But why does the operator have to look at one internal leak detection system and one external leak detection system? Well, with a digital approach, he doesn't have to anymore. You can use a digital environment we've just talked about to bring the data from both of those leak detection systems and make the operator's decision-making process much easier. That's an application which is, which is perfectly suitable for a digital approach. Pipeline integrity management, we've been looking a lot at this recently with um, our friends at uh, Pipeline Sentry we show here. Pipeline integrity management has numerous data sources. It stems right from the feed study when ground conditions are analyzed, soil conditions, seismic movement, um, changes in river flow, et cetera, during seasonal variations, et cetera. On top of that, during the construction phase, you have all of the metallurgy reports, I, all the welding reports, the coating reports in the pipeline, et cetera. So you have a plethora of design data, a plethora of feed study data, and then on top of that, you have the current cathodic protection data being fed into an integrity management system. You have pigging data. If it's an intelligent pig, you gather more data from that. 
So again, it's a perfect example of where there are multiple data sources which need to be contextualized. And then if you look at what companies like Pipeline Sentry are doing, they're actually providing a digital twin for the pipeline itself, the physical pipeline, not the pump stations, not the block valves. So an operator can easily look and visually see how the pipeline conditions have changed over time. Again, perfect adoption of digital technology moving forward in pipeline operations. And I won't spend much more time on this, but anomaly detection, very similar to what we've called uh, asset performance monitoring, basically machine learning being used to, to great effect. And you see this quite a lot already on suppliers, of compressors and pump stations. Look for the norm during steady state running, monitor every signal, every piece of information you can get from that compressor or pump, map it against how it should be performing. And then the actual software itself, the machine learning aspect can actually then start to pick out deviations from the norm. And it's not just for steady state. You can study every startup, every shutdown. You can um, study ramp ups and ramp down in production. So anomaly detection, again, lots of data, lots of analysis power and ML being the perfect application for that. And then finally, just talking about other examples of digital applications remote operations on pipelines very applicable because as i've mentioned earlier one of the biggest safety challenges and risks is travel to site so clearly with augmented operations or a smart worker approach the more data that you make available to a maintenance person who's on a site or traveling to a site the easier their job becomes and the shorter the time required for them on that site i won't go through every sort of um, piece of information that we can provide on the right hand side of this slide just because I'm conscious of time. But it is worth noting that with the suitable communications and 5G is very relevant when we start talking about this, we can provide all of the information required by, from digital applications to that remote worker, making his life or her life safer as far as travel is concerned and much easier to execute the tasks um, in hand. So just moving on very quickly, let's look a little bit of innovation and also tied to or related to the digital world. Um, we talked about conventional leak detection systems, external and internal. Well, perhaps you've seen this in the marketplace recently released by ABB. This is HoverGuard. So the device slung underneath a UAV or a drone actually detects natural gas. In this case, it can detect different gases. And this is typically operated line of sight, but it's a perfect multi-purpose innovative solution for leak detection. It can be used to go and validate a leak detection from one of the two other systems. It can be used to patrol for leaks. It can go patrol not just pipeline sections, but can patrol sites as well. It has very intelligent algorithms in it because obviously with wind direction, et cetera, these factors have to be brought into the algorithm. So it can actually tell you where the leak is, even though it's, if it's not gas going directly up in the air, which would be the perffect world, obviously. So when we took a digital application for this, this could easily be driven from an edge device, i.e. looking at what's come out of the internal LDS, the external LDS. It could send this device the coordinates and dependent on local regulations. Um, if you're allowed to fly unmanned, you could actually fly a UAV um, automatically to the area to investigate. And another nice aspect of this is that if you, if you send that UAV, you can automatically have a camera available as well. So you have visual inspection and you're no longer worried about um, having the, the, the travel aspect unnecessarily if there is no incident to investigate. Um, this here is something we've done many years ago, actually, but I, I mentioned it before. Why, why do all pipelines these days have a SCADA on top of separate ICSS systems, PCS, SIS, ESD, fire and gas, and RTUs? With fiber optic communications, that is no longer a requirement because every all pieces of data for the control and for the digital applications are available real time via fiber. So something we did a long time ago and uh, something which is still very applicable is with civil communications, why put in multiple systems, greatly simplify the engineering, greatly simplify the, the, the system management and the life cycle management by putting in one system. And this system uh, is not just a single remote control room. Of course, it's got a remote control room. It's got a backup control room, but it can also hand over control to every local entity on the pipeline, which means if communications are lost, the fiber is chopped upstream and downstream, every site is still operable if there's personnel there. So this is something which we'd like the EPCs for attending today to consider. This is a very powerful way forward, which simplifies the site engineering and life cycle management. The same approach we take using AI is for, for security. Pipeline security is not like an, a, an, an onshore facility. 
it's distributed over hundreds or thousands of kilometers typically. So typical security personnel often have hundreds or thousands of kilometers of security system data to process. So we're looking at CCTV system, typically at every site in the block files and projects we deliver now. We're looking at audible warning systems. We're looking at um, intruder detection systems, and that can be fiber optic, microwave, et cetera. We're looking at access control systems, and we're even looking at that fiber as, as, an, as a security system, similarly to the leak detection system. Again, we need to simplify that. We need to make it quicker for the operator to identify a real event. Again, a perfect application for AI. Um, so we'll not spend too long on that now. And I will, uh, I'd just like to say again, we won't spend much time on this side, that for the digital world and for seamless real-time control of a pipeline, the communications are the key enabler for that. Okay, just a little bit on how ABB handle this. I mean, a typical pipeline project is shown here on the right where you have multiple system providers, telecoms, digital, SCADA, ICSS, electrical security, pipeline contractors, station contractors, etc interfacing with a management EPC contractor. Well, what, where we decided to simplify this approach, including the digital approach, is that we wrap all of that scope into one. So whereas above is the traditional, quite ugly, quite uh, interface intensive approach, we try and make it a simple interface. And we do make it a simple interface for the EPCM and the operator to work with in both the project and the lifecycle support of the pipeline. Uh, very briefly, where have we applied this and parts of this? You know, these are large pipeline projects, QGC in Australia, uh, Shell started at BG, TANAP in Turkey most recently, huge pipeline linking the Caspian through to Europe, um, SCP pipeline, another Caspian pipeline, gas from the Caspian Sea into Georgia, it recently expanded to SEPX and BTC. So these are all uh, examples of why ABB do have the authority to talk about where a digital app, uh, pipeline uh, philosophy can be applied. So a uh, very brief summary, as I know time is getting short here, we only have 45 minutes. Um, a digital pipeline doesn't have a really good definition. It encompasses many applications and many, many tools to deliver those applications. Data, as Nigel started with, and data is at the end of this conversation, data is the core of digital. You can't have anything digital without having the models, without having the information to analyze and to, to, to bring useful information forward from. The digital platform is only part of the story. I mean, AI and ML, we all know now, are very powerful tools, but tools are nothing without the right people using them and configuring them, and even, in some cases, reading what they're telling you. So that, that, that really summarizes this here part of the presentation. Thank you.